Now, people look at the um, the tick reports, this is the Treasury uh, report of uh, um, uh, what foreign central banks and sovereign wealth funds own of the U.S. Treasury market. That's, that's what it is. And you'll see that China's Treasury security balances are going down, India down, Switzerland down. And you're like, that means they hate the dollar. The answer is no. They love the dollar, but they're desperate. They have they have to get dollars to prop up their own banks. If you're the People's Bank of China, you got to prop up the the Chinese banking system. If you're the Swiss National Bank, you got to prop up Credit Suisse, you know, and, and, and et cetera. And um, so, if if you can't print dollars, which you can, you can sell dollar securities, get the dollars, and then lend them to your own banks, who can then go out and buy the treasury bills. Another inversion that's this is it's not too esoteric um the the fed will actually give you all the treasury bills you want um all you have to do is just do a reverse repo with the fed you deposit your cash with the fed and they uh, they send you treasury bills and it's like can be overnight one week whatever and at some point you unwind it but what you usually do is just roll it over so a phone call to the fed will get you all the treasury bills you want so why doesn't that solve the problem the uh, because if you look at auctions treasury auctions, by the way everything we're talking about is now messed up by this debt ceiling debate because the Fed, the, the, the Treasury can't sell new bills. They can. They, they can roll over, but they can't increase the bill issuance because they're at the debt ceiling. Um, so, but, but until the ceiling was hit, so when, um, but they can issue new to, to roll over. When banks and primary dealers bid at Treasury auctions for Treasury bills, they get a certain rate. You know, the more I pay, the the lower the yield. Or, and, uh, so, but I can call the Fed and they'll send me some treasury bills. The rate at which the Fed will give you bills on a reverse repo basis is higher than the rate that the dealers get when they bid at auction. So why would you do that? Why, why would you bid at auction to get a yield that's lower than what the Fed will give you for a phone call? The answer is the Fed bills cannot be rehypothecated. They can't be used the way the dealers want. They can't send them to you, uh, to Deutsche Bank, but if I own, if I buy the bills at auction, I can, and so there's a liquidity preference for buying treasury bills at auction because I can pledge them to somebody else. And that's what they do. But if I do the reverse repo, I got to hang on to them because the Fed won't let me rehypothecate, and so that's why the uh, yield of maturity at auction is lower than what the Fed will give you for basically for free. But it's another one of these weird, quirky little inversions but it tells you something it tells you exactly what i said which is there's a dollar shortage um and so uh and that will get worse <laughs> as we go into a recession and credit losses pile up and banks get stressed and balance sheets get reduced and dealers say it's treasury bills and i don't even want one-year bills give me a three-week give me a, a four-week bill you know that's going to drive the dollar higher against basically the euro. I would I would expect the whole treasury yield curve to come down a lot, but but not yet. It's like, you know, uh, San Augustine, you know, make me chase, but not yet. Central bank digital currency is, is not a new currency. So a central bank digital dollar is a dollar. A central bank digital euro is a euro, yen, so forth. So it's not a new currency. It's a new ledger and it's a new payment channel. That's what's changed. Uh, it's, and it's not a cryptocurrency. This is not blockchain. You know, the ledger, you know, they're still working it out whether the ledger is maintained by the treasury or the Fed. You know, the Fed could be fiscal agent for the treasury. Uh, yeah, those those are important details, but, the, you know, they're still working those things out. But basically, it's a ledger-based system, 100% digital, encrypted message traffic, and it's a dollar. So what's not to like? And so the pitch for central bank digital currency, I'll refer to the dollar, but it's the same thing around the world. The pitch is, hey, uh, you know, I'm in an airport, I want to buy a candy bar. And I go up and I buy the candy bar and I pay for it with a credit card. And what is the retailer? How does, how does he or she get paid? Well, they take my receivable, right? And they sell them to somebody called a merchant acquirer. Merchant acquirers go out and they just scoop up, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars worth of credit card receivables. And they pay the merchant. So I get the candy bar, they got paid by the merchant acquirer. What does the merchant acquirer do? They deliver them to MasterCard or Visa. And MasterCard or Visa pays that. Like, okay, I got them to take a spread. Uh, what does MasterCard do? They ship them out to all the banks who issue the MasterCards. And the banks pay them. And what does my bank do? Sends me a bill and I pay the bank. Okay, so it's all good. But we got five parties to buy a candy bar. We got me, the retailer, the merchant acquirer, MasterCard, and the issuing bank. 
five counterparties, five different exchanges of value, spreads all along the way. It's clunky, expensive, you know, et cetera. And the Fed says, hey, with a central bank digital currency, Jim will have an account at the Fed. You know, probably my bank, but same thing. A little QR code, boom. And, and the payment goes directly from A to B. It's like Venmo, right, with a few more zeros. So, so it's better, faster, cheaper. Um, the Fed's not gonna disintermediate, disintermediate banks because they exist to prop up the banks. But, but it will be better, faster, cheaper. I think that, that's conclusive. Now, something else has to happen at the same time. You gotta get rid of cash because um, if people don't like central bank digital currencies, and I'll give you 20 reasons not to like them in a minute, but if that's your view, he's a say, I'll, I'll pay cash. I'll hand the person you know, $5 bill, give me some change. Uh, so you got to get rid of cash, and Ken Rogoff, a Harvard professor, and others have been working on that for a long time. But getting rid of cash and pushing out the central bank digital currency go hand in hand. So I always say, if you want to slaughter pigs, you got to get the pigs in a chute and line them up and get them into the slaughterhouse. So you can't let them run around because they'll run away. If you want to slaughter sabers, uh, you got to get them into this digital chute and into the digital slaughterhouse. But they're working on that. So now, where are we? We're in a world where there is no more cash. Maybe you have a credit card, but all the payment channels are through the central bank digital currency. What's the difference? The difference is the Fed, the Fed or Treasury, again, probably the FBI, they can see what you're doing. Now, the other thing is the digital currency, the CBDC, is programmable. So what comes next? Okay, we're all in the CBDC dollar world, right? They say, oh, well, you know what? You've been buying a little too much gasoline, Jim. Looks like you've been driving up and down the East Coast. We're going to limit, we're not going to let your card your CBDC car work at a gas pump for you know, the next 10 days because you're using up too much gas. Um, oh, your heating bill's a little high. Oh, you need to turn the thermostat down, you know, get it down to 64 or whatever. My wife actually likes that, but I, I don't. So, you know, get you know, turn your thermostat down so we're not gonna let you pay your heating bill. You know, they can control how you spend your money, what you spend it on. Uh, it's it's a totalitarian system, but it's what government's like. Um, Biden. Uh, by letting you or not letting you use it. Now, stimulus, you know, Larry Summers, bring him into the act. Um, okay, Jim, you just got, you know, $10,000 in your in your bank account, whatever. Um, we're going to deduct 1% a month until um, it's all gone. So you better spend it. Or, and maybe we'll deduct 5% a month. It's like a, it's like a, uh, um, a, you know, a prepaid debit card or these gift cards. You know, people buy gift cards on Amazon. They have expiration dates. A metro card in the New York subway has an expiration date. If you, you buy a $50 metro card and you don't use it up, it goes away. Well, this will happen to your bank account. So between total surveillance, um, forced stimulus, because you, if you don't spend it, we'll take it away. Negative income tax, uh, sorry, negative uh, interest rates, same thing, Ghana. Uh, oh, tax payments? Well, what happens if you have like a regular job and you, what, how do you pay your taxes? Well, your employer withholds it. They send it in on a form 941. At the end of the year, you get a W-2. It says you made this much. We took out this much. You file your tax return, attach your W-2, and you reconcile with the IRS. That is not true for lawyers, doctors, accountants, consultants, professionals. Uh, and it's not true for a lot of people. It's not, people, not true for people with LLCs who have their own businesses. They don't have withholding. They got to pay their taxes. I'm not saying don't pay your taxes. I'm just saying that um, the government could decide, hey, you know, lawyer jim or dr joe whatever we're gonna we're gonna basically apply w2 style holding to your bank account we're just gonna hold withhold 20 percent of every income hey, you know do your taxes we'll send you the equivalent of a w2 do your taxes reconcile it's all good but we're gonna take it out of your bank account we're not gonna rely on you to pay your own taxes